Good morning, folks. One of the plasma filaments incoming on the south lifted and released yesterday, but it did so without much outward force, and the majority of the plasma fell back down to the sun. You can faintly see it again here in 171 angstroms, but also the filament coming in behind that to replace the one we just lost. Two solar tornadoes at one end, two solar tornadoes at the other. We also saw the Earth-facing quiet effect lose grip as solar features turn away from Earth. Nothing stopping these gorgeous eruptions once they are no longer facing our forbidden blue sphere. It was actually part of a double eruption from behind the limb, stereo on the far side of the sun, so we look at the left side now. It was two filaments releasing and adding to the non-Earth-directed CME mass. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we're seeing the part of the sun facing Earth was quiet and calm once more. We can indeed see the bright umbral magnetic fields on the left connecting the sunspots, and those sunspots have been utterly silent on the Earth-facing disk, despite some size presented as they came into view. But they've decayed, and even the multi-umbral group down south, which is trying to mix the magnetism, has thus far been unable to do so. Density of the solar wind in orange is on the rise, but that's because the speed in yellow is dropping off and particle separation decreases. This has allowed geomagnetic activity to calm considerably, at least for now, but there may be more coming. You might remember that this corona hole already had a large portion up north turn away. Its stream sailed north of our planet and also produced no big quakes. As the only equatorial portion faced Earth, that big quake struck India, over at Gong, we can see how much more those equatorial fields were likely to stretch out towards Earth. Now that the hold is turning, the quake should go down, and the solar wind stream from that one is not going to miss about another day until it gets here. By the way, top quake since the India rumble was right on last night's top OLR anomaly. Hadn't been one at Japan for a few weeks. Folks, score one for the dissidents here. I'm not so shocked at the conclusion, but I am shocked at how few of those made it into the original models. I had to look it up. I wonder how much of the missing, quote, dark matter and dark energy that scientists are looking for can be attributed to missing things like this, or galactic scale Birkeland currents, or vacuum energy, stuff like that. This story has such huge play on the whole of universal physics, it's not even funny. Okay, it is a little bit, but only from this side of the fence. Second top story is a bit of a sad one. You'll remember how adamant I was during the Christmas heat wave to say that it was isolated because other parts of the world were freezing, often in areas that are not so used to it. Wind, cold, snow, catastrophe. Top weather story in the U.S. today comes to the west. Snow up north, but flash flood risks to the south. Low driving that Pacific moisture on shore there. Let's jump across the pond to find a more distended low sitting atop the UK. We are still waiting for the pattern of lows to shift and give you guys a bit of a break there. Down under, we've still got the cyclone, but the other low with its convergence creates the top watch here for eastern Australia, flood risk. Folks, we have just a few weeks until our Phoenix conference wraps up observing the frontier at the end of this month. If you have a way to be near Phoenix at that time, head over to spaceweathernews.com OTF Check out the event details, including discounts for seniors, military, and students. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 5.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.